Now at 5.30, we can report to you that at this hour, they're still at it. A, dead a deadlocked federal jury in downtown Louisville has not given up yet in the retrial of former Metro Police Detective Brent Hankison. But could this uh, three-week-long trial be coming down to another mistrial, the second in two years? The judge handed a note from the jury just before one this afternoon. Here's what it said. We believe we are unable to come to a unanimous decision. Louisville attorney Nick Mudd of the Mudd Legal Group is joining us live to talk about this new development. He's been following this case, of course, very closely, as a lot of folks are. Um, so let's talk about this latest development. Um, this doesn't sound very good as far as trying to get a verdict in this case. It sounds like this might not happen. Right. I mean, we, we have a deadlock jury on the last trial, mm -hmm. and here we are again. They've been in for almost, what, two and a half days now? and they still haven't reached a verdict, that's not very promising. And the fact they've already sent a note out saying essentially we're deadlocked, mm -hmm. um, that's concerning that, you know, again, we're not gonna have a verdict in this case that either guilty or not guilty. You've appeared before this judge, you know how she operates that yes. federal court. So we know of only one question that was asked. I wanna put on the screen that one question that came yesterday. The jury came out during its deliberations and said, do we need to know whether Breonna Taylor was a living victim when Brett Hankison fired. This all goes back to the defense attorney's closing arguments where they raised the specter that her civil rights don't apply because she had already been killed by Miles Cosgrove. Right. Do you think that's what they're hung up on? You know, it's hard to read into jury questions. I've had cases to where they have asked a question and then I speak to the jury after and they go, oh, that was just one person in the <laughs> jury room that cared about that. So I, I have a hard time reading into questions. Everybody wants to. Um, but sometimes you just get one jury who's hung up on something. And but the that's rest an of interesting juries, question. It is a very interesting question, and I think it's just an interesting question from the case itself. Um, but certainly I, I, the fact that that was asked, I assume it was answered, and they're still deadlocked. Here we mm -hmm. sit, how many hours later? Mm -hmm. They're still deadlocked. Since just before 1 o'clock? Uh, right. Did prosecutors do enough to bring a different case forward? A little, uh, what, what did they change? What did they need to do to maybe get a different result this time? You know, the facts are the facts. That's what I say in every case. And, you know, I know they had a little bit different approach with some of the witnesses, I think, with some of the experts. But at the same time, the facts are the facts. And, you know, it appeared more of the same as the same mm -hmm. case. And that's not neither good nor bad, not making a judgment call on that. But it appeared they were laying the same facts out. So, you know, they're not going to change that much. How do you get a different result, though? Well, you know, I've had juries uh, retrials and gotten an entirely different result. You okay. just kind of hope you hit on the key points better. Uh, you make a little bit better arguments mm -hmm. and you kind of can. I know this case was a lot more concise and they tried to be more to the point is my understanding watching the testimony. Jury make up basically nearly a carbon copy of the last jury. Uh, right. One African-American member on this, a, uh, an African-American man uh, is is should that matter in this case, uh, considering the weight of what we're dealing with here and the facts of this case? I think it can factor in, uh, but people want to stereotype jurors. And I, I do think that's a little unfair to do that because I've had juries who are African-American jurors who I thought were going to vote for me in the case and didn't. And I've had the opposite. I've had uh, Caucasian jurors who I thought were against me, they're for me, and vice versa as a prosecutor or a defense lawyer. So you never really know. You know, these juries and this, these cases from the Western District and our district, they don't just come from Jefferson County. They come from Bullitt County, Hardin County, and I believe Meade County as well. So you got kind of a full range of people uh, from different parts of the state. Mm -hmm. So your, your opinion, you've been in front of this judge. You know this federal court. Mm -hmm. Is this going to end? in a mistrial again. Uh, you know, Judge Jennings is a wonderful judge. She's always been fair to me. Uh, she's very polite and does a great job. Very intelligent judge. I think she is pushing hard for there to be a verdict here uh, and having the jury make a unanimous decision one way or the other. However, given the highly political nature of it, as I told you before we went on air, I think it's difficult to find a jury who doesn't come in that is completely unbiased in this type of case with these facts. It is very politically charged, and it would not surprise me if they're deadlocked again. In a case like this, do you think they put themselves in the position of Hankison, like the, when they, they hear the bullets firing and that he's trying to help the fellow officers? Is that what's in their minds, do you think? I think there's two ways to look at it. Some jurors may do that. Some yeah. jurors may say, you know, at the end of the day, you 
you know, you, you shot too many shots wildly, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, so, but the question is, did the government prove their case beyond a reasonable doubt? Because at the end of the day, it's the government's burden to prove the case and they have to do so. So there's no reasonable doubts about his guilt. So the question would remain, would they try this man again? He was acquitted in Jefferson Circuit Court. Yes, sir. Tr f federal trial number one, a mistrial. Now we're, we're looking at a, a possibility on federal trial number two. I think it may depend on uh, the makeup of the voting in the jury, guilty or not guilty, but at the end of the day, I just cannot see the Justice Department in D.C. going forward on this a third time if it hangs. All right. All right. We'll leave it at that. Thank you very much, Nick Mudd of the Mudd Legal Group with his expertise on this. Thank you so much, Nick. And again, we will continue to follow the trial, as Doug mentioned, as Isaiah Kim Martinez reports any developments from the federal courthouse and for those updates sent straight to you, download our WHS 11 News app.